Welcome to our video series about triplet repeat disorders and their molecular diagnostic techniques. This is part one of a two-part presentation created by Talia Silver and Navneet Aujla, students in the Medical Genomics Master's Program at the University of Toronto. In part one of this presentation, we will be using Fragile X Syndrome as an example of triplet repeat disorders. We will discuss the phenotype and molecular basis of disease for Fragile X syndrome, and then move on to current diagnostic techniques. In part one, we will introduce the Southern blot method and discuss the benefits and limitations of using Southern blots for Fragile X testing. Then, follow along to part two, where we will introduce the triplet primed PCR method and discuss how to interpret the electropherogram output. The benefits and limitations of triplet primed PCR will be touched upon, and we will introduce some future directions of what is currently being developed for repeat expansion diagnostics. Fragile X syndrome is characterized by delayed developmental milestones, including motor and language delay and intellectual disability. Physical manifestations of the syndrome are subtle, but can include prominent ears, an elongated face, mitral valve prolapse within the heart, hyperextensible joints, hypotonia, also known as decreased muscle tone, and flat feet. Fragile X syndrome is the most common form of inherited mental retardation and affects approximately 1 in 4,000 males and 1 in 8,000 females. Because of this, Fragile X testing is usually done as a first test when investigating a genetic cause for mental retardation. Fragile X syndrome is inherited in an X-linked dominant fashion, as depicted in this pedigree. Recall that when looking at a pedigree, circles are females and squares are males. The gene implicated in Fragile X is located on the Fraxa locus on the Q arm of the X chromosome. This gene is known as FMR1, Fragile X Mental Retardation 1, and encodes for FMRP, Fragile X mental retardation protein. Fragile X syndrome is caused by expansions of a CGG repeat within the 5' untranslated region of the gene. Expansion of this repeat occurs due to meiotic instability of this region. Unlike Mendelian diseases, where the presence or absence of a variant leads to disease, Fragile X syndrome is stratified into four classes. Normal, have between 5 to 44 CGG repeats. The gray zone, in which there are 45 to 54 repeats. Premutation carriers, who have anywhere between 55 to 199 CGG repeats. And the full mutation, with 200 or more CGG repeats that are hypermethylated. With the exception of the full mutation, a functional FMRP product is formed. However, there is a decrease in protein product in the case of the premutation. And, as a result of methylation in the full mutation, the gene is transcriptionally silenced, leading to an absence of protein. Now that we have discussed Fragile X syndrome, it's time to consider the challenges faced in clinical testing. Historically, Fragile X used to be diagnosed based on a microscopic view of the chromosomes. This is where the name Fragile X comes from. Individuals with repeat expansions would have a distinctive fragile site on the metaphase chromosomes. Diagnostic testing has come a long way since this method was used and requires a higher level of precision for elucidating the exact length of the fragments. To start off, take a moment to think. Why do you think that standard PCR methods would have difficulty in amplifying CGG repeats? And how could this lead to barriers in diagnosis? The major limitations in amplifications of CGG repeats include the fact that this is a GC-rich region, making denaturation difficult. The nucleotide bases, guanine and cytosine, form three hydrogen bonds upon pairing, whereas adenine and thymine form only two. 
As a result, the bond between G and C is stronger, and the GC regions of the DNA have a higher melting point. The temperature required to denature or melt GC-rich regions therefore tends to be higher. Repeats also favor the formation of secondary structures in PCR, and this can lead to artifacts in the PCR products. A third complicating factor is that a polymerase can slip when amplifying repeat regions, again leading to artifacts and products of incorrect length. Furthermore, in normal individuals without a repeat expansion, a PCR product can be made that spans the entire region. However, a repeat expansion elongates the region that has to be amplified. The polymerase may fall off before synthesizing the region where a reverse primer will bind on the product in the subsequent amplification rounds. This results in a mixture of products of varying length and may prevent exponential amplification. In other words, the PCR product of the extended region may not be made effectively. Since the expansion size is the underlying factor in disease, methods that could elucidate the size of fragments are needed. Southern blots were employed as a diagnostic test due to their ability to separate based on length. Here is a sample of the region where the CGG repeat is found. A probe can be designed to hybridize near the repeat to signal the presence of the DNA segment. Flanking this whole area are two ECHOR1 restriction sites. To run a southern blot, the DNA first needs to be digested using restriction enzymes. The DNA is then run on an agarose gel to separate according to length. Fragments are then transferred to a nitrocellulose membrane using an alkaline buffer, and then washed with radioactive probes which hybridize to the region of interest. An x-ray film is then applied and exposed to radiation. The final step is to develop the film. Taking a look at the results for this family, how can we explain the differences between the results seen for 3-1 and seen in his mother, 2-2? The first thing you will notice is that the mother's results show two bands and the son's show only one. This is because males have only one X chromosome and females have two. The mother carried a premutation allele in the meiotic event that produced the egg for her son. The region underwent further expansion, leading to a full mutation allele in individual 3-1. It is important to note that further expansion only occurs in eugenesis for Fragile X syndrome. Some of the benefits of using a southern blot are that southern blots meet the need for separating fragments based on size. Southern blots can also reveal the methylation status of a fragment when used with methylation-specific restriction enzymes. However, this is a labor-intensive process and the use of radioactive material is a concern when it comes to the management of material and waste as well as staph exposure to radiation. Due to the fact that Fragile X is the most common form of inherited mental retardation, Fragile X testing is often done first in order to exclude it as the cause of mental retardation in patients. This fact, coupled with concerns regarding Southern blot testing, required the creation of a novel molecular diagnostic technique, triplet-primed PCR. In part two, we will learn about triplet-primed PCR. Follow the link in the description box or click here. Thank you for watching.